Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation with lots of 3's. We have 3x to the power x equals 3 to the power 3 to the power 3. First of all, let me make clear that when you have an expression like a to the power b to the power c, kind of like a tower, it doesn't mean a to the power b then to the power c. It actually means that you have to take the b to the power c together. So that's how you group when no parentheses are used. Make sense? Okay, now having said that, let's go ahead and simplify our expression. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the solution method, and then we're going to be looking at the a function and its derivative, so on and so forth, and at the end we're going to look at a graph. All right? So, how do we simplify this expression? Well, we said that 3 to the power 3 must be grouped together, so this should give us 3 to the power 27. Let's go ahead and rewrite it here. 3x to the power x equals 3 to the power 27. So far, so good. Now, if we do a one-to-one -one correspondence, like base with the base and the exponent with the exponent, we get the following. This equals 3, and this equals 27. Let's see if that makes sense. 3x equals 3, and x equals 27. Obviously, if x is 27, 3x is not going to be 3, but if you simplify this, you get x equals 1, and obviously x equals 1 and x equals 27 cannot be true at the same time. So that's a contradiction, which means this is not going to work. I mean, it doesn't mean it has no solutions, but the way we do things is not going to help us. So we kind of have to make it a little differently. We have to change things up. How do we do that? So let's take a look. I have 3x, 3x to the power x equals 3 to the power 27. Now, this didn't work, but if I change the base and the exponent, so I'm going to show you here two approaches that you can use. First approach, you can go ahead and try to make the base and the exponent the same. So in other words, try to get something like t to the power t, right? So our base is 3x and exponent is x on the left-hand side. So it's easier to change the exponent because you don't want to divide. I mean, in some cases you could, but it's better if you multiply. So I want to change this to 3x. So let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power. 3. And let's see what happens with that. If I do it, I get 3x to the power x times 3, which is 3x. That's what I was trying to get. Base and the exponents should be the same. And on the right hand side, I get 3 to the power 81. Uh oh, that's not good. That's a very large number. What am I going to do with it? Well, we're going to manipulate this to get what we want. What do we want? We want t to the power t equals something like a to the power a, where a is a constant. Left-hand side, treat it as a variable. Right-hand side, a is a constant. Make sense? Now, how do I achieve that on the right-hand side? Well, 3 to the power 81 can be written as 3 to the power 3 times 27. Obviously, 27 times 3 is the same as 3 times 27. So we can write this as 3 to the power 3 to the power 27 because we have a rule that says whenever you have something like a to the power b to the power c just multiply b and c make sense so we can work back uh, back and forth with that so now here's what we got 3 to the power 3 is 27 so now this becomes 27 to the power 27 and this is significant because we got 3x to the power 3x equals 27 to the power 27. And you know what that means, right? It means 3x equals 27. But is that the only result we get from here? We're going to talk about that. But this definitely gives us a solution because it works. 3x equals 27 gives us x equals 9, and that's actually a valid solution. The million-dollar question is, 
is there another solution or is this the only solution, right? And obviously, I kind of told you that I was going to show you two approaches about this. So let's go ahead and see what the other approach might look like. So we got 3x to the power x before we raised it, before we raised both sides to the third power. Remember what we did here? We had 3x to the power x equals 3 to the power 27. Obviously, when I compare the bases and the exponents, it didn't work because the base is greater, assuming that x is positive, on the, uh, on the base, and the exponent is larger on the right. So that's why they don't match up. But if we can set them equal, like if they're on equal grounds, then uh, we'll get a solution, right? So here's how we can do it. Manipulate the number on the right-hand side. So I want something, I want to write this as an exponential so that its base is three times its exponent. This time we have the exponent being nine times the base. We kind of want to reverse that relationship, but not in a one to nine ratio, in a one to three ratio. And that can be done like this. We can go ahead and break this three down into two times well, 2 times is not going to work, never mind. How about 3 times 9? And then we can kind of go ahead and put the 3 inside. That's going to give us 3 to the power 3 to the power 9. And that's going to be 27 to the power 9. There we go. We got it, right? Look at this now. We have 3x equals 27 and x equals 9. And it all works out. Make sense? And obviously, we get x equals 9 again from here. Cool, cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So finally, I ended up getting something like 3x to the power 3x equals, uh, what was the answer? 3 to the power 81, which is 27 to the 27, and we concluded that x equals 9. Great. But is that the only solution? Let's go ahead and define a function f of t equals t to the power t. Now, if you look at the graph of this function, if you differentiate it first of all, you're going to get t to the power t times 1 plus ln t. Set it equal to 0. From here, you're going to get ln t equals negative 1. t equals e to the power of negative 1 or 1 over e. So our function is going to have a minimum at t equals 1 over e. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll conclude with that. Why is the minimum important? That'll be more clear if you look at the graph. Now, notice that this point is the minimum that we found, which is 1 over e. And obviously, its y-coordinate is just going to be this one, which is 1 over e to the power 1 over e. Some very irrational, transcendental number. Whatever. Now, if you look at the y-value, f of t, you want that to be 27 to the power 27. That's a very, very large number. And when you draw a horizontal line, obviously, that's going to intersect the graph at a single point because our graph is increasing on this number 1 to infinity on that interval our function is increasing that's why we're going to have a single solution and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye